Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Little. I'm here today with the 22nd episode of WeeklyPokerHand.com. Today we have a hand from an $11 tournament I played quite a long time ago, but this is a situation that comes up all the time, so I figured I'd make a video about it, even though the hand is relatively simple and straightforward. So right here, our opponent goes all in for 10 big blinds from second position. Obviously, we have aces, so we're not folding. The question is, though, should we go all in or should we call? And right here, I think that calling would be a huge, not a huge mistake, but it'd be, I think it would be a mistake. Because you really want your opponents to think that you have a hand that you're trying to force them out of the pot with. Now, if instead of having 11,000, we had something like 25,000, I think a call would be good then. Because then we could make our opponent in the big blind think that we're just trying to call with something like Ace Jack and, you know, with the intention of folding if he shoves. But with a stack as short as ours, it's going to be pretty clear if we call that we're not going to fold. Notice we only have 11,000 chips, and there's already a bet of 8,000, so we only have 3,000 chips behind. So because of that, I do think that shoving here is going to be a vastly superior play than calling. And I would shove with whatever range I did plan on playing here. So now I need to figure out what range we plan on playing. If we can bring up Poker Stove here, let's try to give our opponent a range that he's going to be shoving from early position with for 10 big blinds. I think most people would shove all of these hands pretty regularly. I don't really think anyone's folding much worse than this, or much better than these. So let's give someone a fairly tight range. Let's say we have ace-jack offsuit. Um, in, in this spot, I'm gonna, whenever you're in the situation and you're trying to evaluate hands, you should always guess what you would call with. Uh, and try to figure out if it would be a profitable call or not. If I was in this spot, I'd probably call, or I'd probably go all in with, um, I want to say like sevens or better and ace jack or better. I would fold king queen. So let's see. We need to have something like 44% to call. So right here, ace jack would actually be a slight loser against a tight range. Let's check out pocket sevens. Pocket sevens is right at the cusp, so it looks like it needs to be more like ace queen offsuit or ace jack suited. That should be more so the range you're going to be looking to call with here. This is assuming your opponent's never really bluffing as well. Now, if you start adding in a lot more hands like suited aces, suited connectors, stuff like that, you'll see that hands like ace jack offsuit are going to become much better. As you see, it's already up to 50% here. So. You know, you always need to try to evaluate your range and evaluate your opponent. If our opponent here is shoving very tightly, for example, we can get away get away from hands like ace-jack. And a lot of players in my spot would never, ever fold ace-jack to like a 10-big blind shove. They'd just be like, well, I got ace-jack, I call. But it, it's it's like right on the borderline. And the same thing goes for pocket sevens. If, if our opponent is shoving really tight, sevens probably becomes a fold. Interestingly enough, though, let's go back over here and give our opponent the tight range. I'm going to show you that um, let's check out pocket 7's equity see it's 44% pocket 8's equity is just a tiny bit higher so even though it is one notch up it doesn't matter that much but again I still think I would pretty much always call with 8's unless my opponent is just a super super net let's say he's really a super net and he's only shoving like super premium hands like this. If you're shoving like this, you'll now see that eights and sevens should be virtually the same hand. As you see, they both have 39% equity. And it's possible that you always need to try to figure out why that is. And obviously here, notice that both sevens and eights, no pairs he have he could have are lower than mine, because he's not shoving sixes, fives, fours, etc. And all the other hands are all over cards. So the reason that um, sevens and eights are different here but or they're the same here is because all the cards are over cards but in the other example whenever I had him shoving fives there was one extra under pair he could have that we have in pretty bad shape so anyways all that's to say what I would call with or what I would shove with here and I would shove the whole range just to try to protect the whole range in general there's no point in really calling and leaving 3,000 chips behind everyone no matter how you know straightforward they are, are going to look at that and see that that is probably going to be a strong hand um you could try to level some people by calling, but I think that's a little bit silly. So in this spot, I do shove here. 
My opponent has ace two, which wasn't even in his in the loose range I gave him. And we win. So now let's assume we know he's going to be shoving ace two suited. So he's shoving like any ace suited, which means he's probably also going to shove a decent amount of kings and stuff like this. So given a range like this, which still may not even be accurate, he may be shoving more. Let's check out how hands like pocket fives do. You see pocket fives probably is going to have enough equity. Something like ace, nine, offsuit. It's probably going to be close. Yeah, it's kind of about the same. So some of these hands do up. Also, king, queen is going to be an easy call, I believe. Yeah. So we come back to this spot, though. I said we needed... 44% to call, but that assumes that neither of these players ever pick up a hand. And obviously, if we have a playable hand, it's going to really decrease the amount of the time that they're going to have a playable hand, especially since this player is also shoving. So that's probably going to take out a few of the big cards. But um, in general, so say we need 44% to win, you're going to have a little bit more than that. So something like 46 or 47% would be a good number. So that's going to be that for this week. I'm going to turn this hand around and look at it from my opponent's point of view and discuss what hands I would be shoving in his situation in part two of weeklypokerhand.com. And if you want a lot more information on these shove spots, they come up all the time in online shallow stack tournaments, and there are a huge amount of videos on that at my training site, floattheturn.com. If you go there, you can sign up. We'll give you a month for free, so check it out. This has been Jonathan Little. Thanks for watching.